Our next candidates will be those uh, persons running for the office of uh, County Council District 1, uh, Mr. Ernest Davis, as well as Mr. McKinley Haywood. This is Mr. Haywood, Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. Ames was invited, but uh, is not here. So we're going to proceed with the two candidates that we have. Um, I'm going to start by asking these candidates to uh, take a minute, uh, let the audience know who they are, introduce yourselves, please. Would you be kind enough to let the audience know why you are running for uh, District 1 on the County Council? Uh, you've got one minute, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll start here. Uh, good evening. Thank you again, Mary. I, I called Mary on the phone the other night, and I, I guess it was because I was down in Georgia babysitting. Uh, I've been babysitting for two or three weeks, and I really came back with a death or cold. But I tried to get Mary on the phone. She like she didn't want to answer. I don't know what the problem was. But nevertheless, my name is McKinley Hayward, and I guess Marion Barkley probably want to know why I'm standing up here because he was my bus driver when I was a little kid, and I, and I've grown to like Wicomico County. I'm a retired teacher from the Talbot County Board of Education. I've been president of a lot of programs. I, mean, I started off with the We Care program in Salisbury, and I was president of Bowie State University National Alumni Association, president of AAI at College Park, University of Maryland, Bayside Conference president, president of Lower Shore Bowie Alumni ch chapter, and I've been a community resident here for a long, long time. I uh, have been interested in running for this position for quite a while. In fact, uh, I was beat out by my friend over there the last time, and I didn't get a chance to do exactly what I wanted to do. But this time, I am very dedicated because I don't want to be a political figure. I want to be a working figure for Wicomico County because I think there's a lot of things that need to be done in Wicomico County. First of all, I want to thank the NAACP for having this forum. My name is Ernest Davis. I'm a lifetime re resident of Wicomico County, married with four kids. I attend Mount Enoch Holy Church where I'm a ch trustee, the chairman of the trustee board. I'm also the president locally of the Wicomico County Democrat Central Committee. I'm the president of the School Bus Association here in the county. I'm a, I've been 20 years with Merlin State Police. Since I left that job, I've started two businesses, Mid-Atlantic Power Washing, which I've been running for 20 years and also Wicomico Mid-Atlantic Transportation, which I'm a school bus contractor along with owning dump trucks. I say that and all because it's a various background that I've been in throughout my entire life. I'm a working person. I've seen things in the Wicomico County since I've been here with education, economic growth, and agriculture. And those are the three things that I'm gonna focus on and hopefully we can work together and get the jump start on Wicomico County to move ahead. I heard some alluding to the question that I am getting ready to ask. Uh, what do you see as being the three greatest challenges that confronts the county right now, and how would you go about addressing those three uh, greatest challenges in the county? I think you started to address those. Three of the challenges I see that I'm approach as a candidate is education, economic growth, and agriculture. One of the things that haven't been addressed is agriculture in the room tonight. For those who don't know, that agriculture is one of the number one, is the number one product of Maryland. And what's going on now with Annapolis where they're fighting against the farmers with this phosphate. As Wicomico and the Lower Shore, if we don't stand behind the farmers and support them and we start losing farmers, people don't understand the economic impact it would have on Wicomico and the Eastern Shore. If you start losing farmers with the poultry industry, you look at Purdue, we're gonna lose another manufacturing. And my thing with the economic growth is, people look at like Campbell Soup and Crown Corker Seal, those companies are gone. We're gonna to have to start looking at technology and engineering. We got three education institutes that we need to help support. Warwick, Salisbury State, and the University of Maryland. Those three, they have a working relationship with our board education, and what we need to do is show our kids that there is other things that they can do within the Wicomico County to support Wicomico County, and Wicomico County needs to start promoting themselves. We got great assets right here with wallops sitting in our backyard. We start educating people for those jobs, bring, keep those jobs right here, and start the people so they don't have to leave this area to obtain a job. We got jobs right here once we start 
getting those people right here working, our economy will start growing. Thank you. Uh, my theme for Wacomica County this year is, uh, is empowering our community through jobs, education, housing, and employment. Uh, I, I think that uh, jobs and employment probably run hand in hand. Housing is something that you look around in your neighborhood today, you probably can't see a new dwelling going up nowhere near you. The only thing that you probably see is probably condos or apartments. People today like to live in their own single homes, and you don't have that anymore. So my thing would be, uh, we need to work on jobs in this community, uh, high-tech jobs. I'm not talking about the little $7 or $8, $9 hour job. I heard him speak about the $10 minimum wage. I'm not talking about $10 a minimum wage. I want a job where people can go out and make a decent living, go out and buy his own home. Uh, everybody, people, you, you got these renters out here that are renting houses for eight, nine hundred dollars a month and people are making four or five hundred dollars a week. You can't pay that. you never be able to buy a house in your life doing those kinds of things. So why Comical County? Now, this is what I want to really emphasize. I want Rick Pollitt to hear this. We need to invest in our future. That's what we need to do. And we've got to have a vision on how we're going to do that. And if we don't invest in our future and we don't have a vision how we can do that, then we're going to be lost. Fruitland had a, had a vision. What about the end of Mardella? Nothing, all these thousands of dollars every weekend come through uh, Vienna, down through Wacomico County, going to Ocean City. We don't get a dime of that money. So we need to invest in our future in some kind of way so we can stop some of that money. I just want to just wanna make certain I... I hear you clearly. You cited some challenges. You've cited what we need to do. What will you do if elected? What will you do specifically if elected that will help us to move to those solutions or what you see as solutions? What specifically will you do? Well, first of all, I would start with the Board of Education. The Board of Education holds the key to all of this. We need to bridge the gap between our lower kids and our upper kids. And what would I do there? I would have the Board of Education run a survey in the school, find out what vocational education, vocational education classes the kids would like to see in school. Barbering, you, could, you know, everybody, don't ever, I'm sure that everybody in this room did not go to college. And a lot of us in this room are successful. You can be a barber and be successful. Every man in here has to get a haircut. You have $15 or $20 for a haircut. You can live off of that. So we need to go with our vocational education and start in the ninth and 10th grade, working these kids, get them on a skill set. On the 11th and 12th grade year, let them go out and work on OJT. Every kid that graduates from high school should graduate with a resume. He got a resume. When he graduated, walk across that stage, he got a resume that he can send to a job that he, this is what I'm qualified for. But our schools have got to take an interest in this. We, we got kids that are coming out of school with no skills at all. And the, and the purpose of our school system is meet the needs, interests, and abilities of our kids. I'm not going to give the Board of Education $45, $50 million if they can't meet those interests. I'm going to tell you that point blunt. There needs to be accountability between the Board of Education and the taxpayers. He's right with education. I think we need to go start a little younger. When they hit 9th, 10th grade, most of those kids already got their mind made up. They're either going to go to school or they're not going to do anything. We need to start in 5th, 6th grade. Start taking these kids to these, these manufacturers, to wallops, and showing them these jobs. And then it's our job, as I said, we got one of the best vocational schools around. If they're not going to go to a four-year major college, send them over there and let them get that trade. Like I said a while ago, we got Wallops Island. That place is getting ready to blow up. That thing is growing leaps and bounds. We need to educate our people, the kids, and send them over to the Wallace Island. Then they could come back and live in Wicomico County, which helped jumpstart our economy. He talked about housing. When they come back, they're going to want to buy their houses. They won't have to live in an apartment because they got the job and education to do it. How, how would you regard race relations in our county? Uh, earlier this evening, it was 
question was asked with regards to the formation of a race relations committee. Uh, the implication there is if you've got a race relations committee, there is some issues uh, relative to race that exist within the community. What's your sentiments? What's your feelings about that? Uh, uh, is it necessary for us to form or recommend such a committee be formed in this uh, community to address issues of disparity that exist or may exist? Race, um, it, it is, it's all over, it's everywhere. And like they said earlier, there are several different committees out there that are dealing with this issue. And like they said earlier, bring them all to the table because you got this group, this group, and they're all pulling at one another. Put them all together so you got all your resources and then you can go and attack the issue. You got different groups that are attacking the issue from different points. If you put it all together, that way you got all the work right there together so they can attack it all at once instead of having one person doing it this way and this one doing it that, that way. Put it all together and go at it that way. <laughs> I don't know whether I for something like that or not because first of all, as a teacher, as a teacher, I find out that people really want to work together with you, they will work together with you. If they don't, no matter what kind of committee you get, it's not going to solve the problems. Uh, we in here tonight, uh, I look at everybody here tonight, everybody here tonight, you know each other and you get along very well with each other. But people have different classes of people. And when you have different classes of people, then that, that, that causes variation. So I don't know whether a committee could solve that or not. I run a playground during the summer at Lake Street. And my kids see a policeman, they run from him. because You know why? Because the policeman, I listen to them talking about Chief Duncan, and I've spoken with Chief Duncan. I said, why don't you send some of your policemen out to the playground, get a chance to learn some of these kids? They don't do that. The only time that a that a black kid see him when he sees a policeman, he think he's coming to arrest someone. And with the, those are the kind of stigma that we got to get out of Wicomico County. Are you talking about the incident that happened with the police, state police? Uh, you know, those kind of incidents. We need to be educated. And I think that the only way that we can get rid of this kind of uh, rhetoric is that we need to educate our people. And you in here can get along very well because you're educated. But you take other sections of the, of, the, of the community, they're not educated, they don't care about race relationship. Time is becoming our enemy, so we've got to really move along rather quickly. We've got still a few uh, candidates that we need to talk with and hear from. So, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to give you uh, a minute or so. If there's any wrapping up that you'd like to do, I'll give you a minute to wrap up, make a closing comment if you have any. It's optional. If you don't, then... Uh, We'd like to say thank you very much for your presence here this evening, and uh, we, we really appreciate your willingness to serve the residents of this county. So if you'd like a minute to wrap up, uh, just. Yeah, I, I'm very interested in this, huh? and I always dislike her because she beat me out, but you did a good job. <laughs> yes, I'm very interested in running for county council, and I'll tell you what, if I get that position, uh, nobody in Wicomico County, our Board of Education, uh, whatever, is going to be safe because I am going to th do what I think is best for this county. And there's a lot of things that need to be done with the county. Rick probably will not like me. Whoever's on the county council will probably not won't like me because I'm going to do what I think is right. And I am, I am very interested in this position. I am very interested in this position. I will do whatever is necessary to try to become the district one representative and i if i do become district one representative my people in my county will know what is going on because i will always keep you informed thank you and thanks again for having me here okay um again i emphasize the three things that i'll be pushing for education agriculture and economic growth as i said what Wicomico needs to do, they got things in place, they're working on it. I mean, they're, the expansion of the airport, the remodeling of the um, Civic Center, they got things that are starting to go in place to improve the living of Wicomico. And again, what I say is Wicomico need to start tooting its own horn. They need to start advertising. As it was earlier mentioned, that the state is cutting funding. Wicomico has got to start standing on its own two feet. Not saying that we're going to support itself, but we got to start 
from within. We got to help ourselves to turn this thing around. And if I'm elected, I'll be a great asset to that problem. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.